Bless the Lord. Greeting, my friends. The Lord is good. Uh, Psalm 91. So he that will let me seek the place of the most high shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say the Lord is my refuge and my strength, even my God in whom will I trust. You know, we are in trouble time. We, have, we don't need to fear because God said we shall not be afraid. So we ought to greet you in the name of Jesus. This time of perilous time and serious time and time but people are afraid to even walk, to talk, to what of you. But God is able. And because we know him as Lord and Savior and as refuge and as strength, he's a present help in the time of trouble. We just want to greet you and bless you and encourage your heart that you don't give up. Trust the Lord. We are ready to get the word of faith. So let us pray now. Father, we thank you again today for this wonderful privilege that we can share. The word in spite of trouble time and time in trouble. People are perplexed and terrified. We we'll use our hope in the time of need and refuge in the time of, in the time of trouble. Bless us now, we pray. Touch the saints. It must be calm. And to know these two will pass. And we shall not be afraid. Our God is with us. God is for us, who can be against us? Give them strength, Lord. And of course, vice versa, we not hinder us and make us terrified. We shall have faith in God. Thank you for healing, thank you for deliverance, thank you for faith, thank you for faith. power, thank you for strength. And we thank you, Lord, for Jesus' sake. Amen. Yes. Holy is the and the
scenes we're gonna get ready to pray let's sing the chorus again we're near to the cross near to the cross Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us all pray. Most righteous and eternal Father, we just want to thank you, Lord God, for today that we can find ourselves another day, God Almighty, gather in your house. Oh, God, to celebrate a day like Good Friday. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for your mercy and for your grace towards us. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that you love us with an everlasting love. And with loving kindness, Lord, have you joined us, mighty God. So, Lord God, we pray, God Almighty, that you will continue to blanket us with your blood, Almighty God. Mighty God, we ask you to lead and direct us now, we pray. God, we cannot find a way without you, Lord. And in a time like this, we need a savior. Mighty God, when we can see, Lord God, all around us, Lord, that the world, God Almighty, is in a chaos. But Lord, we look unto the hills right now. From whence cometh our help, Lord? Our holy help cometh from you, God Almighty. So we cry for help, Lord. Mighty God, we cry for help, Lord. We cry for help, Almighty God. We ask you to reach down, Mighty God, for your people this morning. Mighty God, many are hurting among us, Lord. But we know, God Almighty, you're the person, God, that we can depend on, Lord God Almighty. So we ask for the comfort, Lord. Comfort your children right now, God. Lord God Almighty, as we give them to you, we just ask these words, Mighty God, to your name's sake and we tell your thanks in jesus name we pray amen and amen praise god i'm going to ask you please to turn your bibles with me to st matthew 26 we are going to read from 36 to 41 hallelujah read that thus then come at jesus with them unto a place called gethsemane and said unto the disciples, Sit ye here a while, go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then said he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful. Then unto sorrowful, even unto death, tarry ye ear, and watch with me. And he went a little further, and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O oh my father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou will. And he cometh unto the disciples and findeth them asleep and said unto Peter, What could he not watch with me one hour? 41 and last. Watch and pray that he entered not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Here ended a portion of God's holy word. Promise to add blessing to his remaining portion. Saying glory be the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, 
as it was in the beginning, now one shall ever shall be, well doubt in. Amen. Amen. And I now turn over to the worship team. God bless you all. Hallelujah. We have to give him thanks, oh God, for what he has done for us this morning. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus. Even this pandemic, oh God, he is saving us. He is keeping us alive and well. Come on, so that we can be here to glorify his name. Hallelujah. We praise your name, Jesus. We magnify your name. You are holy. You are great. You are high and lifted up this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are holy, God. You are righteous, God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, our soul shall rise to thee. You are holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity, my Savior is holy this morning. Above all power, above all king, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man, you were here. Above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world will ever know, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what your oh, crucify, let the live to die, rejected and alone, like a road, trampled on the ground, into the fall. 
Because 
To the tears and made her blind. She felt such pain. Someone spoke in anger. Her folks whispered, There's no place here for a kind. Still, all she came. To the shame that flushed the face Until at last She knelt before his feet And though she spoke no words Everything she said was heard As she poured her love for the master from our bounds of alabaster. And I've come to pour my praise on Him like oil from Mary's alabaster bar. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hair. You weren't there the night he found me. You did not feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me. And you don't know the cost of the oil in my alabaster bar. I can't forget. The way life used to be. See, I was a prisoner to the sin that had me bound. And I spent my days, poured my life without measure into a little treasure box I thought I found until the day when Jesus came to me and knew my soul with the wonder of his touch so now I'm giving back to him all oh, the praise is worthy of I've been forgiven And that's why I love Him so much I come to pour my praise on him like oil from Mary's alabaster bar. Don't be angry if I wash his feet with my tears and I dry them with my hands. My hair, you weren't there the night Jesus found me. You did not feel 
feel what I felt when he wrapped his loving arms around me and you don't know the cause of the oil oh you don't know the cause of my praise you don't know the cause of the oil in my In my Lift up your hands and give him praise. If you're in the house today and you have taken that one look and your life has been transformed, let's give him some praise and honor and glory in the house today. Hallelujah. If all it took for you was just one look, hallelujah, at Jesus. Hallelujah. Just one look, just one look, just one look. Just one look. Hallelujah. You, you may be seated in his presence. There's an old secular song that says, just one look, that's all it took. Some of you remember boogieing to that song in the 70s. Just one look, that's all it took. All it takes is just one look at Jesus. And our lives can be radically transformed. I, I believe that there's a, a couple of persons in this house today that you took that look and your life has not been the same. And you have a reason this morning to lift up your voice. To lift up your voice and give him honor, give him glory. Hallelujah. You see, some of you, you come into church and you see us nicely dressed in our jacket and tie and our broad hats and all these fancy stuff but you don't know where some of us coming from hallelujah if you knew where some of us coming from and when you look and you see us you say lord god almighty jesus good bud because there are some of us in this house today you couldn't even leave your milk in your coffee and it's not gone. There's some of us in the house that you couldn't leave your man or your woman too long and them not gone. There's some of us in the house that as your quint, we would have tell you off. But one look at Jesus. One look at the Savior. One look at the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. One look at the crucified Lamb. And we are who we are today. Somebody just shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And one of the things I'm glad for is that though Jesus has been taken down from the cross. And he has risen again and he now sits at the right hand of God the Father. By faith we can look and still see him on the cross. And his blood being shed for us that we might be redeemed. Hallelujah. I greet you all today in this Good Friday morning service. I greet you on behalf of the apostle, the Reverend Dr. V.T. Williams, the God servant that was sent here to establish this work here on Waltham Park Road and across this nation. I want to ask us to put our hands together and give God thanks for his servant. My spiritual father. And I'm never ashamed 
to say he is my father because he is one of the few men of God that really cut it clean. And I give God thanks for him. As I sat earlier on thinking about today and the fact that today is one of our traditional services, our traditional day, that many persons look forward to a Good Friday service. And I've recognized that over the years that people are coming to church less and less. A few years ago, as a young man in this church, I know by now I would have been standing, not because I was preaching, but because I would have to give a visit to my seat. I remember those days being asked, we're asking all the brothers, please to stand and give the visitors your seat. But things have changed somewhat. And the world around us, people are gravitating towards things and entertainment that only excite them for a moment but brings no lasting change but I believe that God is restoring his house restoring his people that there is going to be and there has begun a revival in this nation that people will run to the house of God again as I sat and I thought about tradition I remember two stories one of them about some soldiers who for years was guarding a piece of slab, concrete slab. And when a new commander-in-chief came into the army and he asked them, why are they guarding this slab? They did not have a reason. They, were, they said, we were just commanded to guard the slab. That's the only reason why they were there. They didn't know what the slab was for, who made the slab, nothing. So they just came and they stood for hours with their, with their guns. Guarding a piece of concrete slab. For eight years, 80 years actually, 80 years, until the commander-in-chief decided to inquire of those who were before him. And he went on down the line until he heard the story that they were building this piece of slab to put somewhere. But while it was wet, goats and other animals would trample on it. And, and would mess on it. So they post guards there to watch it for it to dry. Now the thing dry over 80 years. Did not, wasn't used for its original purpose, but they were still guarding it because of tradition. A friend of mine got married and when he, he came to Christmas, the first year of Christmas, he saw his wife doing something. He didn't say anything, but it went on for a while and then he asked her, he says, Honey, why is it when we buy the leg of ham, you cut off the two end pieces? Before you put it in the oven. She said because I saw my mother doing it. Didn't know the reason why. And then he went to the mother and he asked the mother. And the mother said it was because I saw my mother doing it. Thanks be to God the grandmother was still alive. So he went to the grandmother and he asked the grandmother. Why you would you have done such a thing? He said listen son. Back in my day when we just started having ham in the house, the oven was too small to hold the ham. So we had to cut off piece so the ham could hold in the oven. Now years later, they were still cutting off pieces of the ham, not knowing the real reason why. But I believe that there's some people in the house of God today that know why we come here on a good Friday. We come to lift up the one who died for our sins. We come, we come to glorify the one who hung on the cross and cried out, It is finished! Man's redemption is complete. Look at somebody and tell them, I have a reason to be here this morning. And I have a right to be here this morning. Because Jesus one day, he hung on a cross. He bore my sins. He carried my sorrows. And today, I am free. Woo! There are some traditions that we must keep. There are some things we can throw away, but there are some traditions that
that we can't let go. I love the songwriter that says, so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday. It says to the old rugged cross, I will ever be true. It's shame and reproach gladly bear until he calls me someday. There is a reason to be in the house today. There is a reason to lift up Jesus. There is a reason to praise him. There is a reason to magnify him. I am redeemed. Not with silver or gold. But I'm redeemed by the blood of Jesus. He bore my sins. He bore my sicknesses. He bore my diseases. Ha, 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 ha. Hey, I'm alive because of Jesus. I'm saved because of Jesus. I am delivered because of Jesus. My God Almighty. My God Almighty. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. You don't know where I'm coming from, but he washed me. He cleansed me. He delivered me. He set me free. My Jesus. My Jesus. He hung on the cross. He took my sins. He took your sins. Tell the devil, I'm free. I'm free by the blood of Jesus. I'm free. Now you may be seated. Now let's get into the message. Mm -hmm. Hey, somebody's going to be delivered today. Somebody's not leaving here the same way they came because Jesus is in the house. The book of St. John chapter 3. It tells us a story of Jesus meeting with a man by the name of Nicodemus. And how Nicodemus came to Jesus to ask him the way of salvation. And Jesus began to speak with him and told him that he needs to be what? He says you must I remember as a little boy going to Balmaji Primary School when the girls were cursing each other. They say you must bone and compound. So to, be, to, to, to become a Christian, you must bone and compound. Be born again. And he answered Nicodemus and said, you must be born again. But I want to jump on down to verse 14. It says, and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should what? Should not perish, but have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Touch somebody and tell them, look and live. Tell them, look and live. And all it takes, Aunt Elisa, is just one look. If you even have one eye, just one look. If you even can't see through your natural eyes, but if you look through the eyes of faith, all it takes is one look. Jesus made a reference when he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. He made reference to the book of Numbers chapter 21. Where when the children of Israel were going through the wilderness, they got to a point 
They got to a point where serpents were there in the wilderness. And they began to bite them. And they began to grumble and they began to complain. As a matter of fact, the reason why these serpents were in the wilderness was because they were complaining against God. And against Moses and said, listen, we are tired of this manna. We are tired of this situation. And they were rebelling against God. And God, the Bible said, sent fiery serpents. And they began to bite them. And then the people prayed. And Moses prayed. And God gave Moses an answer. He said, Moses, make a fiery serpent of brass. Put it upon a pole that they can see it. And when anyone gets bitten by a serpent and they look upon that brazen serpent, upon that pole, they would be healed and they would live. Can I confess to you that for many years I was troubled by the text. For many years I could not appreciate the text. I'm serious. I could not appreciate the text. Why? Because... In my studies and throughout history, I've come to recognize that the serpent is a representation of sin. Not true. The serpent is a representation of the devil. I'm saying, how is it God could tell his servant, his servant to make a serpent and put it up and cause his people to look at a serpent? That represents sin and the devil. That was what was in my mind. And it wasn't until last year. No, this year. Earlier this year, my wife and I were in prayer and fasting. And the scripture just jumped in the spirit. As apostle would say, you know, sometimes the Bible does jump off the page and bite you in your heart. The text came to me that says, he who knew no sin... Became sin for us. That we might become the righteousness of God in him. So when they talk about the serpent. The serpent represented sin. But it also represented the work that Jesus Christ would have done years later. Becoming sin for us. That when we become bitten by sin. And we look upon Jesus Christ. We can say he took my sins away. He took my sins away. I don't have to carry the burden. The weight and the guilt of sin anymore. Because he bore my sins. I don't have to carry sickness and diseases anymore. Because he took them on the cross. Quickly, and I'm going to do a slow down a bit. Because I know this church will love the preaching and the shouting and the testimony too. That even when you ask for three, seven come. Because we have an experience with God. Nine types of Christ we want to look at. When we look at the serpent in the... Old Testament. The first point is that the serpent itself was a symbol of sin. It was a symbol of sin and yet a symbol of Christ. We quoted the text earlier in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. He hath made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we who were nobody. Sinners. Gentile dumb dogs might become the righteousness of God only in him. Secondly, the serpent was lifted up on a pole even as Christ was lifted up on a cross. Can I pause here for a moment and share something with you? There are a couple of songs that we sing in church that we need to look at the words properly before we sing them. Just a quick English lesson. You cannot say, or you should not say, no grave cannot hold my body down. That's a double negative. So it's no grave can hold my body down. You get it? If you say no grave cannot hold my body down, then you're saying the grave can hold your body down. But because we know that we have power over death, amen, we will rise again. So no grave can hold my body down. 
Another one we sing is that no sin, no sin at all. No sin cannot enter there. No sin can enter there. That's the correct phrasing. But this one where we sing and we say, ah, lift Jesus higher. Lift from this earth to eternity. That's not correct. Because if this lifting of Jesus represents his crucifixion, I don't want him to stay on a cross. Because it is his resurrection that brings life to me. We keep singing our oh, 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 song again. From this earth to eternity, eternity. He said, if I be lifted up. It is not singing, talking about our praises. Listen to the scripture. The scripture speaks of it. It says, even as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the son of man must be lifted up. So it's not about our praise and our worship but it's about his crucifixion get that one so lift Jesus higher a little higher lift him up for the world to see he said if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me lift him up what for the world to see he said if I be lifted up I will draw all men unto me. So Jesus Christ was lifted up on the cross as sin. As a son of God bearing our sins that we might become sons of God. That we might become righteous through him. Thirdly, as the sick Israelites received healing by looking on the brazen serpent, even so, we today, looking at Jesus, can be healed. I don't hear you. Some of you, some of you, <laughs> you need to even understand, when you look at the medical profession, what does the medical profession use as their symbol? <laughs> Two serpents on a pole is their, their symbol. They are even coming from scripture with what they are doing because Jesus became the sin. He bore our sickness and our diseases. Now we are healed through Jesus. 1 Peter 2, 24 says we were. We were healed. And if we were healed, then we are healed. So we can be like bounty killer and say, I are healed. I are, I are healed. It's not because I felt out of school. But I know the right thing. We are healed by the what? The stripes of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 53, it says what? He was wounded for our transgressions. And he was for our iniquities. Now, our transgression and our iniquities are two different things. Two different things. The word transgression means to step over the line. It speaks of our own willful sin. Where God says to us, don't trouble this, but we trouble it. He says, don't do this or don't do that. But the temptation of the devil push us to take the people things and to do crazy stuff. But Jesus bore that for us. The other thing, the other word is our iniquity. He was wounded for our transgressions. And he was what? Bruised for our iniquity. No, the word iniquity, it speaks of the generational sin. In Exodus, he says he will visit the sins of the father or the iniquity of the father unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate him. So iniquity is the the generational curse that's in your family line. I hear some people talking and they say, listen, pastor, you don't understand. It's because my name is Lewis. Why am I stay so? Pastor, you don't know everybody will name Grant. I don't so we behave. But I'm telling you, if it is sin, it is wrong. 
and Jesus was bruised that that iniquity can come out of your life. You don't have to live like how your four parents live because any man be in Christ Jesus, he becomes what? A new creature. All things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Why? Because Jesus hung on a cross. Let's move on quickly. Number four. As the Israelites who looked on the serpent continue to live, even so, as we look on Jesus, we have eternal life. Look at somebody and tell them, don't, don't tell them, don't stop looking. Tell them, don't change your focus. Tell, tell somebody and tell them, don't turn away your head. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He declares, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. If you're going to know the way, you've got to keep your focus on Jesus. If you're going to be healed and delivered, you've got to keep your focus on Jesus. There are many things that will come to tempt you. Many things that will come to divert you. But you've got to refocus yourself. Sometimes in this Christian journey, people will give you trouble. People will come with your problems, but focus on Jesus. The songwriter says, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face and the things of this earth will go strangely dim. What? In the light of his glory and his grace. Keep your eyes on Jesus. When the tidal waves of life around you roll. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Peter was walking. Quite okay. Heading towards Jesus. The sea was violent. Storm came immediately on the sea. But he was walking to Jesus. But then he got distracted. The moment he got distracted, he began to sink. The moment you stop praying like you used to, you'll begin to sink. The moment you stop praising like you used to, you have begun to sink. The moment you stop giving like you used to, you have begun to sink. The moment you stop fellowshipping like you should, you begin to sink. The devil tell you, you don't have to go to church. You can worship God at home. Yes, it's true. But he's smart enough to know that if he can catch you alone, he will defeat you. So you need to come together in the assembling of the saints together where there is strength. Because there is strength in numbers. So don't forget the assembling of ourselves together. As the manner of some is, Paul says in Hebrews. God provided, number five, no other remedy at this point in Israel's history. There was nothing else that was there to heal them from the serpent's bites. But a serpent lifted up on a pole. Can I tell you that there is no other way to be saved but to come through Jesus. He is the only way. He declares of himself, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. The definite article is used. He says, I am it. There is no other savior but Jesus. There is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved. But the name of who? Jesus. Can somebody call his name? Jesus. Come on, call his name. Call his name. Jesus. There is power in his name. There is power in his name. Acts chapter 4 verse 12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name on the heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. But the name of who? Jesus Christ our Savior. Buddha name won't work. Hare Krishna name won't work. David Grant name worse won't work. It has to be the name that is above every name. Hallelujah. The name at which demons tremble. 
the name at which salvation comes, the name at which sickness and disease is dropped. Is there anybody here today who is bold enough, daring enough to shout the name? Shout the name! Jesus. Hallelujah! He says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, not anybody else, but the Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Only through Jesus. The serpent was the only remedy. There was no mixture. There was no balm or ointment that was used. All they had to do was just look. One look at the serpent. My God Almighty. There's somebody who is going to be healed today. Because you're going to see Jesus in a different light today. Hallelujah. And that one look that you will take at Jesus. You shall be healed. As the Israelites, number six, as the Israelites had faith in the brazen serpent as the remedy for their sin and sicknesses, so today we must have faith in Jesus. Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, for by grace or by faith are we saved. By grace are we saved through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast. It is by faith in who? In Christ and Christ alone. It is what the, 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 the Latin says, solo Christo. Christ alone. It's not Christ and the day you worship. It's not Christ and the baptism you are baptized in. It's not Christ and wh whether you wear a dress or you wear maxi or whatever. It's, not, it's nothing else. It must be Christ and Christ alone. Everything else come after that. But the only way to be saved is to accept Jesus Christ. Accept the work that he has done on the cross. Number seven. As God's power was invisible, was the invisible force in the brazen remedy, serpent remedy. So it is through Christ. Because none of us, when we became Christians, we saw Christ at the altar, did you? Let me see how many of you, when you came to the altar, you saw Jesus Christ in his long white robe with his flowing beard. Say, come. And you saw his nail-scarred hands. And as you sang, into my heart, Lord Jesus, he opened your mouth and just slid down into your heart. None of us. It's an act of faith. It's an act of faith. And I've said that God will be unrighteous. Uncle Mikey. He will be unrighteous and wicked to expect us to accept him by faith and didn't give us faith. We cannot develop faith on our own. The Bible said, for God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. God give every living human being the ability to come to him. I don't care what your problems are. If you have faith to, for the bench to hold you up, you can have faith in Jesus. Every day we exercise faith. Especially those of us who take public transportation. Every day you exercise faith. Especially those of us who live on medication. Every day you exercise faith. Because you go to the doctor and they write a prescription you can't read. You give it to a stranger you don't know. You don't know if they can read it. But you give it to them and you exercise faith that what they are giving you is the right remedy. So why can't we just trust Jesus? Why can't we put our faith in Jesus Christ? The one who died for our sins. 
the one who made us in the first place and have the power to redeem us. We have faith to go in an aircraft and tons of iron. Take one plane here, one plane there and reach China. And in some cases, we all fasten the seat, but close our eyes, rock back the seat. Iron was not made to fly. Iron was not made to fly. But we have faith in the manufacturer of the Boeing aircraft. And we go in there and we tell people, I'm going to Atlanta. Fasten our seatbelts, close our eyes, and we have faith that we're going to get there. Then why can't we trust Jesus who made it? He made the heavens and the earth, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Some trust in chariots. Some in our says, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. Why? Because the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it. <laughs> and are saved. One writer said, what time I am afraid I will trust in you. But another writer that I will trust and not be afraid. Because we know God is good for it. He's got the whole world in his hand. Yes, he made the world, the sea and land. Fasten them together with his mighty hand under his control. Move at his command. Nobody... But my Lord, don't hurt yourself now, but beat your chest and say, my Lord. Excuse me, Rastaman can't declare this. Buddhists can't declare this. Islamic people can't declare this. But we who name the name of the Lord can declare that our God is our refuge and strength. A present help in the time of trouble. We can trust him. Like a shepherd, he will lead us. In paths of righteousness, he will lay us down by still waters. He will feed us in the presence of our enemy. That's the God that we serve. And can you imagine? He took on the form of sinful flesh. He hung on a cross for you and I that we can have rights today to be like him. Bore the whipping, bore the beating, carried our sins, carried our sorrows, that we can have joy today. The writer said, therefore with joy shall we draw waters from the wells of salvation. Excuse me, but I've got to praise Jesus. I need somebody right now, just for about five minutes. Or five seconds, jump up to your feet and begin to give him glory. If you know that you are saved, if you know that you are delivered, if you know that you are healed by the stripes of Jesus, open your mouth, open your mouth, worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Somebody's being healed right now. Somebody is being healed right now. Ah, ye boko shata. Ye ma ma bo soko. Yes, 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 yes. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. 
receive your healing. He bore your sickness. You don't have to carry it anymore. Oh, my God. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, just worship him, somebody. Worship him, somebody. Hey, Jesus. If some people could get the opportunity right now to testify what the Lord has done for them, where they are coming from, and where he has brought us now, just turn to somebody and look at them and say, look what the Lord has done. Come on, tell somebody else, look at me now. Ah, oh, yes, 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 there's an anointing in the house right now. I feel Rabo Sheke Sata. There is an anointing. I release it. I release it. I release it. I release the anointing upon you right now. He bore your sins. Ah, Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be delivered in the name of Jesus. Let me be obedient to the Spirit of God. But if you have a sickness or a disease, join a line right here, right now. Form a line right here, right now. We're going to pray for you. If you have some kind of sickness or disease, today is your day to be healed. We commemorate the victory of Jesus on the cross. He hung and he cried out, It is finished! Quickly. Mako shakapa basata. Be made whole by the stripes of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Ah, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I speak to the iris, the pupil, the retina, the optic nerve, the eyeball. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Be made whole in the name of Jesus. Is your name. This is why he died. Jesus. Jesus.
Holy, 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 holy is the 